Let's get right to our starting point this hour. The Supreme Court, we just heard from Jeff Tubin say, you know, maybe as early as today, uh, they're going to rule on the constitutionality of President Obama's health care reform law. One of the key issues that the justices are looking at is the law's individual mandate, which requires all Americans to get health insurance or face steep fines. Congresswoman Michelle Bachman has been one of the most outspoken critics of the law. Her opposition was a key part of her presidential campaign earlier this year. Listen. As President of the United States, I will not rest until I repeal Obamacare. It's a promise. She's been uh, closely watching the Supreme Court's decision. Nice to see you. Thanks for being with us, Congresswoman. Appreciate your time this morning. Um, Good what, morning. What do you think is going to happen? Uh, we know, obviously, in, it's in front of the Supreme Court. We just heard Jeff Tubin updating us, you know, could happen today. Uh, what do you think the result will be? Well, we're all hopeful, of course, that there will be a full-scale repeal of Obamacare because what we want to focus on is bringing down the cost for every American, making health care cheaper and more affordable and more accessible. And we know that that's a real possibility if we can get rid of this law. Let's talk a little bit about the folks who don't have health care because this law would propose yeah. to cover them. Something like 49.9 million people, 7.3 million of them are children. What do you propose to do for those people who are not covered. Well, that is what we want to do because we know there are millions of Americans who are suffering without health insurance and there are some options that really can happen with, that are painless without a lot of cost. One of those would quite simply be letting every American buy any insurance policy they want anywhere in the United States of America. And today, Americans can't use their own tax-free money to purchase any health care that they need. I think they should. And then finally, we could have true medical malpractice reform. If you implement just those three measures alone, Soledad, that would quickly bring down the cost of health care. And of course, as soon as you bring down the cost, then you have millions of more Americans who can access health care. You're obviously against the, the mandate. And for many people would say, and that's clearly what the Supreme Court is going to be digging into uh, this week. Uh, people say, listen, there are mandates all over the place. You've got, you know, we mandate people to pay taxes. We mandate people to insure their cars if they, they want to drive. Why are you against the mandate? Well, this is unprecedented. In fact, even the Supreme Court said that. This is absolutely unprecedented because government has never before at the federal level forced an American to purchase a product or a service just because that individual breathes. Every American is forced to buy a product or service that government says under Obamacare, which is essentially a tax because government has the monopoly. They have all the parameters and decision making and Americans are forced to buy a very expensive product even if they don't want it. That's never happened before in over 235 years of our country. This isn't the time to start that now, especially on something as intimate and personal as health care. Polls show uh, when they poll people about health care, 47% uh, are against the law, but, but, and 43% are for the law. So it's pretty close, but when you add to those who are for the law, the 13% who are against it because they don't think the law goes far enough, that would kind of add up to that math, 56%. Do you worry that you're polling against what the populace wants? Well, because actually the polling shows about 70% of the American people, Soledad, want Obamacare either repealed or reformed. They want it changed. And so this is a highly unpopular law. Probably no other law in recent memory has been un as unpopular as the president's health care plan. And I think it's quite simply because people realize government has uh, calls all of the shots and the people pay all of the bills. And people reflexively don't want politicians making their health care decisions for them. People want to make their own health care decisions together with their doctors. And I think that's something we can all embrace. Congressman, stand by for one moment while we discuss the politics of this with our, our panelists. So obviously um, what we see is this debate that's in front of the Supreme Court, but really a bigger debate politically. And that debate's going to move very quickly. The, the Republicans we've heard for some time now have advocated repeal and replace. Well, we need to focus soon on what that replace possibly could be, because if the Supreme Court goes the way many think it will, we're going to have to talk about what is next. The Congressman pointed out a couple of things that, that, that perhaps the Republicans will be proposing, and that is allowing people to buy insurance across state lines, some kind of medical malpractice tort reform. I would suggest there has to be something done about the link between employment and insurance. But we're going to have this debate very soon again. What is next? Right. I, I think one of the other challenges is that 
the even the people for whom this is unpopular still like many dimensions of the That's reform right. policy. And right now in an election season, people don't want to feel as if crucial things like being able to cover their children up to the age of 25 and other things like that are being taken away from them. I think we need concrete solutions. So let's talk about that back with the congresswoman. Do you worry about that as in an election year uh, that the Obama campaign could leverage, if it is killed, uh, could leverage off of that and say uh, this is a huge, you know, uh, use the, the killing of the law in order to get leverage? Well, I think because the, the law has been so widely unpopular, we haven't heard the president even talking about his signature piece of legislation during his presidency. Even with State of the Union address, the president didn't refer to it. In all likelihood, that's because even by the government's nonpartisan own estimates, 4 million Americans are slated to lose their employer health insurance. Why? Because it's so expensive that employers, millions of them, will be dropping the health insurance of their employees. And so there are so many negative ramifications that have already occurred. In fact, just this last year, health insurance premiums skyrocketed Soledad. They went up three times faster than in 2010. Health insurance premiums spiked to over 9% just this last year. That's part of the reason why it's so wildly unpopular and why I think you pres see the president not wanting to talk about his health care plan. Congressman Michelle Bachman, nice to see you. Thanks for talking with us. Good morning. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um